Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Oxenfree. Previously in Oxenfree, we headed into the town after hooking up with all our friends and experiencing a bit of drama. Yep, this isn't budging. Um, I don't know about that. I think, yeah, I think we can just bust our way through, honestly. We're gonna have to use the radio. The lock looks pretty worn. I don't get enough breaking down doors in my life, really, so I'm not gonna complain. Well, that was actually simple. Cross your fingers and hold your thumbs. Mural box. To sign up cabinet. for the aquatics program, please register at the front desk. Yes. Uh, okay. Has that happened before? Constantly. Yeah, but you'll get used to it. Hey, know what kind of jet that is? Nope. Cool. Carry on. Ren probably would have told me. I bet they come up with another question then later on and be like, What kind of jet was the one on the mural that you saw in that room? Uh, I think here's something. It's another Don't know. Pocket Your friend radio, hangs. I think. But it, it's like there's way more stations on the dial. Ooh, neato. Here's another one. It says, They're wall radios? Wave assisted lock? Whatever that means. Now oh, we can actually unlock doors. It says right here that each frequency is like a key to open the doors around here. So they're like ID tags or something. It must work for the gate to Adler's house too. Oh, great. Let's hike it back to the gate. Ooh, wait. Wait, here's like a... Wait. What is this? Personal effects of Margaret Dorothy Adler. Why would her stuff be here? Didn't her family or... Like, hasn't her family been carting her things back to town? No, she has no family. Back. I just probably part of the military. Okay, here. To whom it should concern, this island and its history I did not hit a key. is just a did lie. That. Jeez, she didn't have fond memories of this place, did she? What? What could that mean? I have been compelled by both forces outside of my control and my own willful concern for the safety of others to conceal the many truths about Edward's Island. But now I feel any further inaction may carry a far greater risk. Forces outside our control. Like, like ghosts or the army or what was she talking about? Let me finish then. Inside you'll find two wall equipped radios. I have commandeered the old Cardinal Station 140.1 and used it to relay clues to the nearby beacons buried throughout the area. Find these beacons and the notes within and discover the true chronicle of the island. Oh, scavenger hunt! Oh, scavenger hunt, scavenger hunt. I'm going to act <laughs> Wait, optimistic at the wrong time. To whosoever finds the material, know that I'm discomfited in keeping it hidden and ashamed for the lies I helped preserve. But also know that I acted in what I felt were the best interests for all at the time. And truly for the interest of time itself. Margaret Adler. <laughs> I've had, oh, I've seriously had like dreams about this. Finding a secret, digging it up, it turning out to be a mechanical unicorn. Yeah. Or a bunch of ghosts that keep us trapped hundred, forever. But I think I'm ready just to go home. To be totally face up with you. Oh my god. Alright, here's the first letter. The Kamaloa was destroyed by friendly fire? We, we've been lied to all this time. USS Walter Roy, a destroyer escort, sunk the USS Kanalo, Kanaloa with friendly fire on October 25th, 1943. It had held a developmental nuclear reactor in its belly, and had been sent out weeks earlier as a test of its capabilities. Relatively few even knew of its existence, which tripled the base's confusion when the submarine communications had been cut. Oh, since so they don't know of its existence, they shot it. No one outside of a handful of us would ever know the truth. I would later discover that a weapons technician of the Walter Roy had been at F Francis Salter's wedding. Salter was an engineer on the Canaloa. I don't know why. But it's strange to me. That's letter number four, I guess. Alright. We have the way to unlock doors. And we have letters spawning on the map now. So, scavenger hunt time. Quite literally. Alright, the first thing we can obviously <laughs> unlock is over Why here. Why are you wearing that jacket? It's like 75 degrees and the sun's out, you know? 
And I thought you said you were gonna go swimming anyway. You bring a jacket, but you don't bring a swimsuit. It's cold, that's why. The sun is kinda out, but when you're in the shade, it drops to like 50. No, it doesn't. Hey, Michael, we didn't Michael. bring drinks. Did we? I thought we said we'd bring drinks. Wait, Michael? Uh, yeah? What is it? Did I almost step on a crab or something? What? How? Why am I here? This why? is why I told me to talk to beach. Michael. There's stuff in town, but it's all boring knickknack shops or whatever. No, come on, Alex. Relax. No, I mean, in this time period. Ah, oh, geez, you're hitting the existential nostalgia trip already? I get it, Alex. I would have been happier in the 70s. The 70s? That's like the worst time. Where's... where's Jonas? Jonas? Who's Jonas? Is someone else coming? I met Jonas. Yeah, is that a friend of yours? I just... never mind, I guess. Okay, Clarissa, take a note. Remind me to check the yearbook for a Jonas, so I can make fun of Alex's secret boyfriend. <laughs> oh, God. Today turned out to be... a flawless day. It really did. Yeah, no, it did. It really did. I wanted to bring a kite, but thought you'd laugh at me. Uh, yeah, um, it really is kinda ideal, actually. Yeah, I'm like, right about to start sweating, but I'm not. No, it is perfect ice cream and tennis weather. That is rare. I never quite understood the questioning your reality kind of thing. You're like, no, obviously you've been transported back in time and stuff. So I just go with the flow. Like, you know you're, you know if things aren't the same and everyone just can be confused. It's been a spell since we did something, right? I feel like I haven't talked to you in a while. How have you been? What's been going on? How's classes? How's, what's his face, Mr. Collins' English? Truthfully, I've, um, I've... Ah, sorry, I think, yeah, I, <laughs> I accidentally left my phone on the ferry because I do things like that. <laughs> oh God, you idiot, go get it before it leaves. When I get back, I want to hear an Alex story. This is not when you drown, <laughs> right? Well, can't I just come with you? I'll take two seconds. Think of something to tell me. So... Uh, <laughs> Do you... Well, I guess you don't remember anything, right? What am I Kick meant this to ball. remember? I'm sorry, did I forget something? I'm bad with... Dates. Our whole, like, island horror show. Ghosts and possessions and... And none of this is jarring like anything loose. If this is about Ren's movie, I mean, I told him I didn't want to do it. Half the script was an underwear scene, so, you know, no thanks. Um, I'm glad we could all do stuff today. I'm glad you were cool with it, I mean. I know you guys are really close and, like... See, Clarissa got a lot harder after the death. It's annoying when somebody death. starts keeping all their time for their girlfriend or whatever. So... I think it would be cool if we could, like, continue to do things together. Yeah, I, um, totally understand. And, yeah, let's, uh, do stuff. You know. Cool, cool. I wonder if it'll affect Michael, the present uh, at all. He loves you, like, a lot. I'm sure you know that, but he talks about you all the time. <laughs> oh, Alex did this, and Alex let the frogs out in science class. Isn't she hilarious? He just, uh, he thinks you're a cool girl. Yeah. Well, I love him too. Had to fight the skipper for it, but he didn't reckon how many squats I could do. What's it up to? Six? Only on burrito days. On non-burrito days, it's like eight. Actually, Clarissa and I had a nice chat while you were away. Kinda sorry to see you back so soon, to be honest. Oh, really? I'm sure Alex sold you on how I lock her in the basement and treat her like a shaved monkey. The version that I is true. you trap her in the greenhouse. Yeah, well, it changes month to month. No, it was perfectly fine. Perfectly amicable. Amiable. It means the same thing. All right. Sorry. So, I actually really want a cold something, so I'm going to run into town and get, like, a soda. Anybody want anything? Um, no, nah, I'm good. Uh, yeah. Get me a drink, too? Sure. I'll be back. If it affects the president, it might make it more okay, friendly towards here. us. What's the story? I want the news. I want the Alex first edition. What's going on? Things are bad, actually. 
Mom and Dad aren't great, and I'm like a hair trigger away from spinning off this planet and- Hey, hey, look. First of all, Mom and Dad are Mom and Dad. They fight a lot, but they're whatever. Everything always blows over. It's gonna be fine. You're too young. We're too young to worry about marital discord. Yeah. Not really. Sure. And look, I know this was supposed to be our day, but I completely forgot I promised Clarissa I'd do something with her, so thanks for chaperoning. I know it's not what you had in mind, so... But I owe you. Yeah, no problem. Just don't get all smoochy smooch while I'm in the general vicinity. <laughs> because that would ever happen. It's yes. important to me that you like Clarissa, Alex, so tell me the truth. What do you really think of her? Stick with it. Stay with her. If she makes you happy, if she makes you laugh, who am I to say anything otherwise? Thank you. Good blessings, good tidings. You know, I never noticed. That's a good looking jacket. I should ask for it back. I don't like my new one. Feels like I got shoes on my arms or something. <sighs> you know what, Bucko? I need it more than you. <laughs> Especially later on. Bucko, you haven't called me that in years. Time continuing changing. Alex, are you? Yeah, we've been Are you back skip. with me now? Man, you've been acting like a. I don't even know how to put it. Like a bird just flitting around in circles for ten minutes. I was about to like slap you or scream or something. It's been not fun to watch in light of everything. Nona, I I just saw. I think I just saw my brother Mike. What? How? Where? Here? Is he? Was it like a? I don't. I don't know what to call it. A vision? I was or somehow trapped between worlds. Like those time jumps we're sometimes having, right? This was. I don't think it's time wise. It's like we've been having ripples, and this was a wave. I was bumped all the way back to when Michael was still alive. Right now. So this island itself, I don't think is stable. Anyway, let's go back and open that door. Oh, letter. I didn't know Maggie grew up in Maine. There's a similar statue of a soldier in Maine, where I grew up. My memory of it is, I think, part of the reason why I said yes when the army recruited me out of college, despite my family's protestations. Anna, my closest friend from childhood, was of course thrilled at the possibility of my escape. I anonymously started the petition in 1975 to have this one made, after the daughter of Canola Crewman, Francis Salter, asked, I don't know why. A marker, maybe, for the hope I once had to help people. So we can confirm she is military. Uh, I can't go back. That's disappointing. There's probably more dialogue up here. Rig on that anomaly. Right around here is something's gonna trigger. Cause it didn't let me go to the next screen. Hey, that was just a temporary bug. Why aren't you at the tower? This one got a little antsy. Weird stuff was playing on the radio. That voice said I had a mother's laugh. What does that even mean? Anyways, are we happy? We are happy. We got a new radio that's supposed to open doors and gates in some magical way. Oh, thank God. I was getting nervous that you would have walked all that way and then not found anything. Seeing as how it was my advice to uh, do the whole thing, but it worked out so great. Yeah, let's focus on the subject at hand. Gone though. Gone? Gone like dead? Or no? I guess there was a what do you guys call it? Like a time loop thing? She pretty much got transmogrified to someplace else. It's sad that any of those words make any sense to me, but yeah, should we maybe look for her? Possibly. Even if the boat plan works, we shouldn't leave her here. Listen, if we have the key, which is apparently this radio, then let's just go to the house and see. And if it looks like we can leave that way, then we'll go on a Clarissa hunt. <sighs> All right. I think you're supposed to use the radio to tune into the gate, right, Alex? Yeah, pretty much. So are you going to try the gate thing, or...? You know, it's pretty obvious what I gotta do. You don't have to, like, start talking to around. If we're to go to the around. house, let's just do it. Try the... I guess the radio will open this, somehow? Hopefully. Give it a whirl. Let's see. Over here. Here's something. That's not it. That's music. More music.
It depends how fine I have to hit this. Because I'm not sure if I have to hit right on the dot. Right, chill in the area. Because the triangles is just a general area. This feels like it might maybe have to be on the dot. Let's go all the way back. Here we go, here we go. It shines brighter. Oh, wow. Neat. <sighs> please have a boat, please have a boat, please have a boat. Just think happy thoughts. Yeah, happy thoughts. Time to go scavenger hunting. Where are you going? I thought we... Aren't we sticking to the... The find the boat and paddle away game plan? Maggie Adler left a bunch of mysterious mystery stuff all over the place, and I'm not leaving until I get my hands on them. I like how the game Seriously? compensates for it. That's like a concern? Okay, but uh, that kind of feels like a morning thing, but sure. And Nona's not even on the screen and still talking to me, but you know, we'll, we'll work it out. Time to backtrack. Let's open this door right here. There we are, right there. Open sesame. That told me absolutely nothing. Bozik helped her transcribe the ghost's transmissions. Marianne Bozik, forever engraved on the Command Annex's memorial plaque, was a kind, humble woman who helped me decode the ghost's unusual messages. I don't think she ever really believed my hypotheses that they were relays from the sunken submarine, even though she corresponded with, as she put it, a man named Calvin, an electrician who died on the Canaloa. I pieced together the truth, the cover-up, my own tragic mistake that killed him and his mates over months of careful deciphering. Oh, Maggie says she hopes the notes are found by the correct person. Well, I guess that'll have to be us. And we are not the correct people. To whoever is finding these notes, understand my hope is that by enshrouding this intelligence in such an obtuse manner, its detection will discourage most innocent seekers thereby allowing it to befall the correct person and not the easily distracted military mind, nor the typically bewildered excursionist. Do not blame the submarine crew. I don't believe its passengers like Henry Griffin can even understand what has truly happened to them, and you do not have to forgive me for my myriad of failures. But please, remember the name, Anna Shea. Know that she did not deserve her fate. This early version of what would today be considered a blast and fallout shelter was commissioned and built in 1946. The above ground hub leads to a bunker 60 feet beneath the Earth's surface, molded with layers of poured concrete and packed earth. The lead blast door will only unlock through use of the call and response system, a setup devised by Lieutenant Commander Matthew Feinberg to prevent tampering. If the Catbird Station, a small watch point in Edwards Forest, radios in a decoded attack, the shelter door will automatically open, triggering an alarm and compulsory evacuation. This early... Oh, she was working at the tower the morning they sank. I was on watch duty in the tower when it happened, having just gone back from an early leave for the reading of my father's will. For years, I childishly blamed him for this, too. His one last act against me. But it was nobody's fault or decision but my own. I'm sure it was Francis Salter who sent the Canaloa's distress signal. It had been cut off. I still don't know why. And I hastily interpreted the garbled transmission as an attempt to jam radar. And so I sent back the guidebook recommendation. To scout and bomb, if necessary.
So it was her fault that I got shot. Um, we still don't know why there's ghosts here and how they're communicating with us, but we'll find out with some of her letters. I guess Maggie was the one who had this place turned into a park. After the fort closed, I used the considerable resources from my father's endowment to buy up most of the land, or influence government officials to declare that which I could not buy protected. I have not been entirely successful, and have watched in horror as a small tourist industry has precariously sprung upon this cursed island. Even the family of one of us sailors who died, Calvin Gilbert, set up a restaurant to cater to inquisitive out-of-towners. I can promise this, though. The museum will never happen, and the beach and the caves will be boarded up. Damn tourists. Always getting their nose in the cursed spooky ghost stuff. This thing's so weird looking. Apparently it's 400 years old. There's a cafe in town named after it. And next, on the tour of Edwards Island, an old bush. Well, I think this stuff is interesting. It's four centuries old, you're not impressed by that? It's a tree, so... not really, no. When he was stationed at Fort Milner, Colonel Tim Russell would frequently wander the woods west of his barracks and sketch the wildlife he'd encounter on his walks. After the fort closed in 1974, he led a petition to make the land federally protected, and in 1988, he succeeded. Now, Edwards Forest is an internationally recognized wildlife refuge and bird sanctuary, home to 120 bird species, most notably the white-tailed tohi, a large sparrow indigenous to only this island. The roosting tree that stands before you is a 400-year-old red alder, famous since its discovery in 1655, when Franciscan friars noted that its unusually twisted trunk is bent true north. She thinks that the ghosts were pushed out of our reality and maybe aren't actually dead? My belief, bolstered by Anna's and my research conducted largely at the Catbird Station, where interruptions were rare, is that the men and the women of the U.S. Kanaloa were separated from our dimensional existence by the implosion of the submarine's nuclear reactor. That makes absolutely no sense from a science perspective, but you know ghosts. I identified one passenger, Henry, by his call sign, and his confused diction and reliance on game logic says to me that their emotional states, if not mental states, had been reduced to that of children. A thought I cling to when I envision Anna's demise. Call sign 139. Okay, so if your nuclear reactor or plant or whatever explodes and implodes, rather, and you're near it, you uh, get thrown out of this dimension. You don't just die or anything. You're, you're out of this dimension. Goodbye. If a missile strike or airborne invasion was identified, a call would be sent from this station and, if the signal was found to be accurate, would trigger automatic safety measures and the evacuation of non-personnel. The Catbird station was built to detect any enemy attempting a strike from the air. When operational, it was fully outfitted with an SCR-271 antenna and an early version of OTH, which stands for Over the Horizon, a radar system used to detect targets at extreme distances. It was also the first check of the call and response method. If a missile strike or... Oh, Maggie thought that the way the ghosts can talk to us, and vice versa, is waves. Anna and I frequently conducted tests that was once the East Barracks here during the brutal winter of 51. Waves of any kind, radio, nuclear, electromagnetic, seemed able to pass through all existences under certain circumstances, which explained our ability to get communiques sent from them. This might also justify the frequency of hearing one of the Kanaloa's electrician's call signs, Calvin Gilbert, come echoing through the relays. On April 4th, 1952, we would attempt to reverse the manifest breakdown and bring the soldiers back. This is some real... It's very iffy science. There is some science to, um... Uh, the multiple dimensions and stuff like that, and particles and everything. 
a nuclear implosion sending you over in there is not quite how I would imagine it, but there is... It comes from some logic, at least. Waves and all that stuff like that going through different things also makes some vague sense, but... Um, yeah, ghosts. But what was odd? Teddy also registered images on objects, places, and persons on magnetic tape, taking into consideration the impossibility of... They, um, Maggie and Anna tried to bring the soldiers back in the cave. After stealing equipment from this relay station, Anna and I entered the cave just before dawn to try to communicate directly with the crew of the USS Kanaloa. We successfully tuned in to the source of the temporal tear and spoke, a bit briefly, to Henry Griffin, an SOC sergeant who died on the sub, but the power overwhelmed my dear Anna and she was absorbed into its ridge. All that remains there now is the flickering hue of a partially open gate, a window to a perpendicular space that seems to have augmented the submarine's call. All of my regrets, perhaps the deepest, is knowing Anna's last vision was of me, fleeing from her in terror. You know, we've been opening gates all this entire time. I feel like we've been doing something very wrong. Let's crack this baby open. The base first found the ghost's messages here. The first transmissions from the lost soldiers were recorded here by signal officer training new recruits. I heard about it soon after. Yes, word of the childlike, almost playful messages spread quickly, but the broadcasts were usually dismissed as an ongoing prank, faulty equipment, or AM stations bouncing off the Midland. However, after I successfully decoded one as a mayday from Calvin Gilbert, an electrician who perished in the USS, Kanaloa. I knew it had to be something more. She... Well, Maggie brought her friend Anna here to help, I guess. When people in the comms department began transferring off, I was able to convince my higher-ups, including, coincidentally, one eventual army passenger on board the Kanaloas, Henry Griffin, to bring Anna on board as a replacement. Anna had been working in broadcasting, so it made enough sense to the upper ranks. Incidentally, when I dream, it is usually during this time period that miss the change, and I am trying to prevent Anna from ever coming. Hmm, the communication school here taught them how to make codes. Recruits learned communications technology here, and several others learned code breaking, it's true. But due to my aptitude in math and mechanical engineering, I was assigned code making specifically ciphers, with which to conceal projects from even other government agencies. It was a job I grew increasingly uncomfortable with, but my keen interest in radio science had me pulling double duty as a comms officer. I remember one of Kanaloa's engineers, Francis, calling me a radio woman. As far as he knew, it was my only job. And with that, I believe that is all the letters and all the anomalies, if you include the previous video in this series. So all 12, and all letters, in order. So we're done with this island. Let's go to the final area and end this mystery, if we can even do that.
Jesus, that house is huge. That lady really knew how to live. It's like the Chateau de Adler. There is something up with her. She has this giant house. She's burying, like, secret messages all over the place. I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, and we can leave it to Scrappy-Doo or whoever to figure it out. Scrappy-Doo! Scrappy Scrappy-Doo. Yeah, but we could figure it out. Aren't you the least bit curious? There's not going to be a sunken pirate ship at the end of this, Alex. It's just a wrecked submarine. We did yeah. find all the letters, though. And if though. you're really so anxious, you can come back on your own time. I just want to get home. Oh. Oh, it's like a... It's like a boat that needs keys. There are no oars. And before we go crazy, it's not... It wasn't with Maggie's stuff back at the office, like with the radio? No. We looked through all of her stuff, I think. Huh. Well, uh... What's plan B if we can't find it? Um... Keys, they... They have to be in the house. For the movers or her family, you know? That's as good a guess as any. Alright, let's check out the house then. Come on, Jonas. First, I'm going to just take a quick peek down here. Boom. Sometimes when I lock myself out of my house, I'll just... I can't help but just stare at the deadbolt trying to, like, hypnotize it to open or something. You ever do that? Um, not really. But we can try that now if you think it'll help. Considering all the crazy stuff that's been going on, then we probably actually could do that. Or we just jump to a timeline where... That boat has keys. Not so much as timelines, but really the more possibilities. It's a radio lock. The woman sure did love her antiquated security. Right here. That is a nifty gizmo. It's not a bad idea, actually. I wonder if you ever think to use the radio to unlock these places. Finally. Carissa, oh, God, Jesus. You scared me. Thought you were like. Maggie Adler's dead body or something. Everyone, just keep your distance. What? Why? It's Clarissa. Yes, dear. Why? I'm as harmless as a June bug. Something's... something's wrong with you. I don't know what, but... but I don't know. It's like you're just not on our side. Like she's not still possessed? Not on your side? What, I... I yell at you a little bit and suddenly I'm a Russian spy now? Stuff happened, it happens, it's fine. It's barely worth mentioning now. It was more than just yelling, okay? You were dropping atom bombs of rage on my head. Honey, you would know if I was truly upset, okay? Ask Nona. Scott Fisher is a limp for a reason. Look, Clarissa's here, so everyone's here now. We can just... everyone's okay, all right? That's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, let's just find the keys to the boat or a phone or whatever and just find a way home. I promise we can all keep talking and or fighting at school on Monday. Yes. I don't care what she says, just everyone keep your eye on her. Yeah, if you're all not careful, I might put my feet on the upholstery. Okay, we That's get it. That's awful. Uh, carry on. Everybody find something and hope that it helps. I know we only, like, did two triangles last time we were with her. So I don't think she's fully free of the ghost, but at the same time we haven't opened up a weird dimension anywhere. How are so. you doing? How are you doing? Look, Jonas, are we, like, okay? I mean, because of the whole taking not you to town thing. <sighs> I'm not going to pretend it didn't bother me a little, but it'd be stupid to, like, tonight has been bad enough. I'm not going to crab about that. I mean, are you, like, mad at me or something? No, no, no. Like, no, 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 we're... I want to be okay with you. I just... If we keep at each other's throats, I don't know if I'll be able to make it through the night. Me neither. So let's just not be at each other's throats anymore. There. See? Easy. Man, she owned enough books. It's mostly math, I think. Ergodic thermodynamics. And religion. Sheesh, okay, there's a lot of... Okay, we get it. She liked the smell of paper. Fascinating Listen. insight. We'll all miss her dearly. Okay, why don't you get off your ass and help then? I am helping, by keeping out of the way of more enterprising sorts like yourself. Ugh. Phone. <sighs> it's been disconnected. Figured. Bummer. All right, just the upstairs where all these sciencey blueprints are. Really obvious. Oh, that's an attic. Thought it was like a cat's toy or something. Wanna come up? Yeah, sure. It 
It's gotta be in this chest. No, I should check out downstairs anyway first. There's some stuff I missed down here. Wait, have you seen this? It's like a, a star map or a diagram of planets or something. Yeah, why would she need anything like a map of the universe? I mean, it's not like she's bouncing stuff off satellites for a job. Or maybe they were back then, what do I know? Maybe they needed to chart uh, signals through space or something? Yeah, maybe. Oh, it's a, it's a draft of her letter that she left in the office. To whom it should concern. She left notes everywhere, she said. Hidden with secret signals. She was an odd one, I'll give her that. But, you know, cool in a way. Maybe she was up to something, you ever think of that? I mean, she's wrapped up in this thing somehow. Maybe, but also things don't have to make sense. Sometimes stuff just happens, and that's the end of it. Please don't let that be a commentary against the player trying to investigate the more serious parts of the plot. I know this science doesn't make sense, you know. I'm willing to suspend some disbelief, but... The I like that little bit of an explanation in the end. Needs a combination. Mrs. Adler was either paranoid beyond belief or just a very tidy woman. Well, she buried information in sonically camouflaged containers, Jonas. My guess is paranoid. Alright, back downstairs it is, where we just came from. Let's see, let's poke around. We've already checked that up here, so it's gotta be downstairs. Where would you hide the combination? Outside, maybe? There is a door down there, like a basement. Uh... Put some clothes on! <laughs> Remember that guy? Where are your parents? You kids better than- Oh, um, Chad's lake house. Yeah, yeah, that guy was a friggin' weirdo. Uh, yeah. Hey, Nona. Hey. Okay, so this is probably a terrible time to bring this up. Actually, I know it is, but Ren really does mean well, so just take it easy on him. No, uh, please, let's talk about something normal. But, uh, yeah. I will, no problem. Hey, Clarissa. Clarissa? Your Highness. For the 800th time, and I don't even know why I feel like I have to keep selling you on this, but here goes again. Michael wasn't my fault. <sighs> as long as you believe it, I guess. But where did Ren go? Over here, maybe? I don't see him anywhere. That's weird. Unless he's in the boat somewhere. Yeah, he's down here. There's something in here. Just looks like vacation slides or something. Find anything useful? Not yet. But you know, the night is young. So, it's Nona's birthday in three days. Really? Awesome. Yeah. That that's great. That's great. I can um I can really use that. I feel like it's like I'm behind enemy lines with that one. Just this be nice is what I'm trying to say. Say happy birthday, you know? Normal human stuff. Oh, yeah, no. Of course. Got it. I'll turn up the nice, turn down the charm. Don't worry. Thanks. All right, Ren, I'll trust you, buddy. Task. Huh. Ren, you were right. There's like a ledger here. The Adler family does own the island. Never doubt me. And here's the combination for the... There's a, a padlock chest in the attic upstairs. 29, 18, 54. Uh, cool? She made a lot of... What should I call these? Slides? They're, they're not videos. Um, they're called film? Silent memories? It seems like film plays a big part in the symbolism of the story, because we always have to roll the tapes around, and we see that kind of noise effect come up whenever the loops happen. Are you, um, doing okay? 
Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah? We're going home soon, so... Yeah, that's true. I'm still waiting for you to suddenly turn on a ghost on me and, like, sink the ship as we're on it. All right, let's go open this. 29, 18, 54. It's a lot of radios and those containers we saw at the town office. Oh, and like a map of the caverns. She's written here, tune into the source. What do you think that means? She couldn't have known about the ghosts, right? Tune into the source. It, it's probably something about the special radios, you know? Huh. Is this, ah, the boat keys. Got him. Perfecto. All right, we got keys for the boat. Where? Jonas found them in a chest upstairs. So, say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I was just saying it. It's not directed at you or anything. Okay. Well, you guys, seriously? We had this discussion back in the damn tower. Stop it. Oh, Alex. God. Oh, Alex. Come down here, please. Did you become an axe murderer in this timeline? Show you. <laughs> uh, Clarissa? Where are you? In the family room, dear. We're all in oil, marinated, so to speak. <laughs> Ren, are you... Are you alright? We're in a... We're in a time loop thing. Not you know, I think this is an alternate timeline. I think this is a what if we got stuck here and just starved. Nona, come on, honey, it's time to motor. Come on, Jonas, I, I really need you. Don't blank out on me now. Everyone's just passed out. Now where's Clarissa? There you are. Now we imagine you're a bit confused. But don't fret. This will be the final part of your training, Alex. All training is supervised by very skilled instructors. Stop. Just stop whatever this is, can't you? Just just fix my friends. Please. Your friends are as fine as they've ever been, okay? There's nothing to bleed over. You signed up for this, Alexandra. Is possible. So please, I cannot bear your excuses, offspring. You walked in here with clear eyes. I meant to know what the hell was gonna happen. And yet, without understanding your footing, you still acted. Don't worry. The test is easy. We will speak of something we see in the house, and you will go and find it. See? As simple and good humored as your mother's apple pie. What is it with you guys and all the, the games? You're like dogs or children. Just what is the point? The point, dear, the point is that they were never games. And you can figure that out by your lonesome. Now, let's start with the softball. I spy, with my little eye, radiation. There is, of course, a time limit here. Oh, God. Time. Television. Time. Is it... are you talking about the TV? Very good. Well done. The older models emitted X-rays. But right now, you'd be wise to think of radiation and other sex. Submarine. Pay attention. What are you even talking about? I spy. With my little eye. A notch. Let's make this a little harder, okay? Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Uh, is it the, the this painting? That's not right. It looks kind of like a knot. Excellent, excellent. excellent. Wait, it was okay. So Thank God. It's time for the bonus round, Alex. So stay quick. This is what you really want to find. I spy with my little eye a picture of a memory. Be fast now. The the picture of of I guess it's Anna. Bobby Adler and somebody. Is this it? Yes, very, very nice. That's Margaret Adler and her friend Emma. See, you and your schoolyard chums are experiencing. Well, this has sort of happened before. Maggie and Emma tried to sport with us many years ago, and well, only one survived. And in the process, we discovered a way for us to return, so to speak. It just takes a little time. 
and a far-reaching tolerance for the ignorance. Wait, what? What happened to Anna? Let's leave it at the poor girl didn't know what she was playing with. It doesn't matter. They're not an eternal recurrence. The waves. It's the waves, we think. And we will use those waves to absorb into your friends so the sunlight blooms into flowers. You want to use his puppets. And we will engulf. You, you can't do that! Think about what you're doing! We can do that, Alex. And what has seemed to your parents as 80 years has been for us eons to know an existence without life. That's what our mind is deconstructing. We had to wait and soak. We had to keep you here on the island. It will be a great honor, Alex, really, to carry us through this life. And on to the next. You... you had your time. You had your time. Don't take ours just because you had some... some accident. We never had our time. It was ripped from us. We watched the universe's conception fly to its demise over and over and over again. When our vessel dashed on the rocks, we had until dawn, and so will you. We would spend our time wisely, and we thank you for your good service. So, I'm kind of screwed. There's the music again. Time to turn everything back. Hopefully this will work as usual. I'm wondering if turning these actually counteracts them in a way. Like turning back their possession. That's why it loops. It's like we're stopping them from doing it. What? Michael should go to school. Don't influence Michael. Michael should go on his own. Go to school here. Okay, seriously, who are you? It's me. Need the right speed. So we can go on. <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna be sick. Me first. Uh, it wasn't a dream or a vision or something. You and Clarissa standing in the living room just now, was it? Ugh. No, that was very, very real. No, you guys believe me, my Clarissa. Trouble. Yeah. God, yeah, we kind of really are. So. I mean, Christ, if Clarissa was whisked away to the cave by nuclear submarine monsters, then... I mean, the plan has to be to retrieve her, right? I'm still going to call them ghosts, if that's okay. A ghost is a monster, so... Clarissa is only, like, one slice of the problem. We're all infected or whatever, so we need to rip the issue off like a bandage all at once. Okay, great, yeah, but how do we do that? Well, uh, a good question. Maggie, I think Maggie Adler might have had some sort of a plan or a, a scheme or something to fix what's going on. What possible plan could Maggie Adler have? First of all, she's dead. And second of all, she was like the island Mother Goose. She wrote in her journal or something or other about tuning into the source of the problem in the cave. And I think she was talking about the ghosts. Well, if we're going to the cave... Oh, actually, I forgot. I saw the entrance has been caved in since you guys went inside. All right. I know there are a whole bunch of secret communist bomb-fearing tunnels dug into this place during the 1950s. We have and to go Maggie for the. Maggie has loads of film about military stuff in her basement, so. Maybe there's a way back into the cave through one of those. You're thinking? <sighs> Nuclear fallout shelter. Take a look. What kind of name is a Fippany Fields anyway? Wait, is it a Fippany? It's uh. It's Epiphany Field. Oh, that makes more sense. I feel like they can't control our main character, because we're the one who tuned in in the first place and have the radio. So that's why we seem to be more in control of the loop. Uh, all the others are just puppets in the cycle, though. How oh, many times we've done this. Be careful, that film's really flammable. Wouldn't want Smoke and Johnny to light the house on fire. Ha ha. Alright, there's already something in here. 
Experiments and findings of experienced phenomena, January 52. Awesome. Oh, man. If this turns out to be just prehistoric home videos... Yeah. I'm sure this is just the... Uh... God, it's just the first thing. Just give it a second to warm up, will you? Next you slides. Can, uh, skip this one, Alex. Okay, we're getting warmer, I think. So, if you look at shelter. the, like, lines or whatever, the bomb shelter should lead right into the cave. Just like from another angle. According to this, at least. Oh, so it does. But won't it be, like, locked or something, right? Yeah, how do we get in? It's just like the cave wall, only steel or whatever bomb shelters are made out of. You already have our radio. We right, already know well, I have to going. use that. Oh, what? She knew about these things? Wow, that's crazy. It says that to fix a temporal tear, that's a mouthful, in the cave, we would need to transpose to the other side and tune into the source within itself. Okay, but we're not doing that, right? Good question. Yeah, that's... That's going a little above. Above and beyond. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but strap in, boys and girls, because we might have to, okay? If it's the only thing that will fix us. Yeah, but that's, like, scary. Well, something better work. Or we're boned. Or we're boned. Precisely. Oh, sorry, this is like, this looks like the end, but from the, from the wrong film thing. No, 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 wait. This is something I actually remember from that stupid radio tour thing, because it, like, sounded so weird. It's called the call and response system. It unlocks the bomb shelter. This is showing us how to do it. See, it says when someone sends an emergency signal from the catbird station in the woods and the receiving station confirms it. It's like a connected response thing. Brilliant. Really? It's good enough for me. Alex and me will head through the woods, do the um call part. You and Ren can hang by the door to the bomb shelter and open it when it's ready. Wait, wait, I, um, I'm sorry, I kind of zoned out there for a second. What are we doing? Ren and Nona are team, um, Soaring Eagle, and you and I are awesome squad. I like oh. that. I want that one. And we're splitting up to work on some old fangled machinery to open the bomb shelter, to get into the cave, to yada yada yada, save our lives, or whatever. Alright, so we have to backtrack again to go up there. Use a response station, they lol at the thing, and we come back down. Alright, break. And if anything goes wrong, please, don't tell me, I won't want to know. Well, now I'm gonna run over there and specifically tell you at the first drop of bad news. No. Well, this has been an eventful night, guys. Don't you think so? Come to the beach, do a little bit of illegal drinking, trespassing, and tap into all of existence and get possessed by people trapped in all of existence. What is down here anyway? Ah, Beacon Beach. All right, gang, let's split up and look for clues. I mean, go do the stuff. Ren. Alex, Alex, okay, are you, are you back to normal? I just saw, it, it, it was like a premonition, I think, and I know that sounds whatever, but this must be what it's like when people say they do that, because, I kind of just saw Ren drowning. Okay, okay, just take it easy for a second. You went all red-eyed, like when we get possessed. I did? You stopped walking and started mumbling, and then your eyes lit up like little road flares. It only lasted like a minute, but we should hurry up and do this before the door on you opens any wider to them. But the thing with Ren, it was so real. It was like it, I was there with him. Maybe we should go back. But I'm sure he's fine, so let's finish what we started. Where is Ren? Not even on the damn map. See you guys later. Have fun. Don't get possessed and jump off the cliff. 
be really awkward for you guys jumping off the cliff. Not me, because I wouldn't be the one jumping. You guys. Yeah, that, that'd be really bad. You know what time it is? It's four in the morning, which is usually about the time everyone decides if they're going to bed or ordering another three pizzas. Yeah? What's your vote usually? Three in, pizzas. Uh, that situation. Uh, never leave pizza on the table. It's like getting 11 in blackjack. Just double down. Don't even think about it. You think Don't question all this random the furniture. Thing's gonna work? Like, really? It really doesn't matter if I think it's gonna work. It's sort of all we have, and we're running out of time. It is all we have, yeah. I just... I just wish I felt like the ghosts were concerned that their plan won't work. I just feel like they're pretty confident. Like they know by sunrise they're all gonna be shopping for school supplies. Jonas, they should be concerned. They should be scared. And that's on them if they're not. Alright, good to hear. I think this... Um, stuff is getting pulled in from, like, their time or something. This is so weird. Um, yeah, it's not exactly a good omen. I think we're running out of runway here. I really don't know how old furniture arrived here. I mean, I guess it might be on the submarine. So, not only was the, were the people transported due to a nuclear implosion, but furniture was. That chair deconstructed Adam, sent to another timeline. How? Don't question it. Science. 